Hi there and welcome to another video. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey down here in southeastern California exploring some of the fantastic geology here. And you know sometimes serendipity plays a huge role in making just awesome discoveries. And I just finished up the video at Gargoyle Canyon and was headed across a wash about a mile south of there and saw a track heading off up the wash and thought, well, I got a few more minutes. Let's go see what's up there. Not really expecting to see anything really remarkable. And lo and behold, like not even, I don't know, um, maybe 100 meters, 100 yards or so from the highway, this is what the wall of the wash uh, looks like. Pretty crazy, right? So this thing really caught my attention, came to another screeching halt, although it wasn't really going that fast. Um, but we have quite the, Quite the geologic structure here. Hopefully you can see that well with the lighting. Um, and sometimes when we do these things, it's the story that's a little bit easier to figure out. And the name is a little hard trying to figure out what kind of label to put on the structure or the landform or whatever it is that we're looking at. Uh, in this case, I think the name's pretty easy, but the story uh, is much more difficult. So let's start with what this thing is, and then let's work together uh, some possible stories. And just to give you a little heads up here, I do not have a clear idea of exactly how this thing came to be, but let's start with what we can see big picture, um, and then we'll kind of take it from there. So we can see we've got some layered rocks, some, some sedimentary rocks. Uh, the most obvious thing is to see that the units on top here above this distinct break in geologic um, sort of texture or patterns here. This top unit is more or less horizontal. It has, I can see from here, it has a lot of class in it. It looks like more of these alluvial fan deposits, conglomerates, gravel, sand, um, various rock um, sizes. And then we have this distinct contact and then the unit below it, which is probably the most arresting uh, feature that we see here with beds of sediment that are vertical to near vertical and definitely somewhat folded. We can see this thing sort of snakes up um, in a pattern as it goes up the wall here. So the feature we have here is an angular unconformity right here where these two rocks meet. And unconformity is where we have um, a break in deposition. Some amount of time has gone on between two adjoining rock units. So this unit down here, which is older, um, there had to have been some period of time before we deposited the unit up on top. And here it's an angular unconformity because the unit below and the unit above are not parallel to each other. The unit above is more or less horizontal in terms of its layering or bedding, and the unit below is at a much steeper, nearly uh, uh, perpendicular angle to that with these steep beds here. So this is what we call an angular unconformity, where the beds above and below the unconformity are not parallel. That's the easy job. We just did that work pretty easily. The bigger question would be how it all came to be. Now, again, on the surface, it's not too complicated, right? These rocks were laid down Sedimentary rocks were laid down approximately horizontal. Later, these rocks were tilted or folded or brought to this new orientation we see here. Then there was a period of erosion before this top unit was deposited. So we've got uh, several distinct chapters to that story. What I'm sort of perplexed about, and again, I just got here a few minutes ago, um, and I probably won't figure it out by the time I record this and, and then we leave, is how exactly uh, these rocks were folded. Because when you look at these, these are not exactly the hardest. I mean, calling these rocks is somewhat generous. These are fairly soft. A lot of it's sandstone. This is a nice uh, kind of medium to coarse green sandstone. Others like this bed here, I suspect, are um, possibly carbonate rocks. This is Pliocene rocks that are, I believe, part of the Bouse Formation. I didn't bring my acid with me, but I'd, I'd bet my bottom dollar that this will fizz a little bit. So this is some carbonate material. And then there's just a series, as we look at these end on, because that's the way the layers run, of just you know intervals that are mostly 
mudstones and these kind of are the crumbly layers layers of sandstone that are more well cemented and well indurated um, more layers of mudstone just sort of fall apart and so we can trace these units out it is interesting this unit right here you might be able to pick out some of these white blobs these are some concretions in the rock but they're quite soft i thought they might be uh, pretty hard but here some of them are at the bottom and they're actually not very not very resistant this one's maybe a little bit tougher than some of the others and i guess they're probably a little bit stronger than some of the sand or mud that they reside in but overall um oops let's pick that up they're not very not very tough at all let's go ahead and break this one open since we're committed now yeah so you can see it's not incredibly resistant um very fine grained so these kind of mud concretions that are a little bit harder apparently but not that hard in the grand scheme of things um, and then as we work our way across with this close-up view again you can see the beds folded a little bit a little bit warped leading right into that unconformity but as we move this way to the west um, the beds start to decrease and dip a little bit so you can see them actually not nearly as steep as they were a few uh, feet or so to my left they're now a little bit less steep sort of moderately dipping to the west we can still see them up here right below the unconformity still dipping to the west and then as you head a little bit further you lose the good exposure of those beds and then it all sort of merges into this red unit in front of me which is a mudstone you can see the way it's breaking here and we would need a, a good excavator or something to come in here and dig into this thing and really see how these are oriented you know and we might if we spend enough time here clearing this out we might be able to figure it out uh, on our own to see if these beds are still tilted or if they uh, turn back over so what was most surprising to me and the head scratcher was a couple things one is seeing these sediments these very soft sediments turned vertically like that is not something you see that often although you do see it a little bit over towards the san andreas fault in the salt and trough um, and then secondly is just trying to figure out what would cause these lower units to be tilted at such a high angle and i mean undoubtedly possibly some uh, compression is possible but we're in a zone remember we're in the basin and range so it's a little less likely that you'd have some big compressive stress regime that produces that it could be strike slip faults though and since we're getting a little bit closer towards the salt and trough that would be my hypothesis is you've got some sideways faults and you've got a zone of rock caught up possibly between two adjacent strike slip faults strike slip faults tend to be vertical so when they move side to side um, you can sometimes get the rocks caught in between those two faults get rotated to these these steep angles so um, probably more questions than answers here, but I thought I'd share this with you and uh, I guess I'll have to Try to see if I can find anything here. We're in sort of a You know less I don't know how much research has been done out down in this area, but kind of an obscure part of Southern California Yeah, but just a real dramatic structure, this beautiful angular, angular unconformity, one of the nicer ones I've ever seen. And one that I really wanted to try to share with you and see what we can come up with together. But again, tilted beds below, these beautiful, and if these are indeed Pliocene, this may be part of the Bouse formation. So it'd be like four to five million years old. Uh, and then the sharp contact right here and then we would have above that the mostly flat-lying, much younger uh, alluvial fan deposits making up the conglomerate up above. So you never know what you're going to find here. So 
Thanks for joining me on this fun little excursion. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you uh, discovered something that I missed or have a good hypothesis. Feel free to share that and I'll try to respond uh, if I'm able to. But thanks again from Southeastern California.